In this set of videos, we're going to look at a series of procedures that we can use to assess whether a normal errors regression model is appropriate for our data. Now all of these diagnostics start after we fit the model. So what I'm going to do first is go to Analyze, Fit Model. In this particular situation, what we're trying to do is predict, uh, predict hospital satisfaction uh, from a series of predictors, that is the age of a person, the severity of their condition, and the anxiety that they felt going into the hospital. So we're going to take all these terms and add them to our model effects, and we're not going to fit any bilinear interaction terms here. We're just going to fit these as uh, first order parameters. Uh, so let's go ahead and hit run. Now to conduct the diagnostics, the basis for many of them will be the residuals from the model. That is the uh, amount the model was off for every individual. Now to save these residuals, we're going to go to the upper context menu, go to save columns, what we're going to do is save the residuals. Now while we're here, I'm also going to go to the context menu and save the predicted values. Now what this is going to do is save for each individual uh, the prediction the model made. And this is going to be useful for us because we're going to be able to look at whether our residuals have any relationship uh, to these predicted values. Now that we have our residuals saved as well as the uh, predicted values, I'm going to minimize this fit least squares and we'll come back to that later. But notice that our data set now has two new columns. For each individual, a residual, and for each individual, the predicted value of satisfaction. Now the first assumption of the model that we want to investigate is whether the error terms, or whether the errors of our model, are normally distributed. Now remember that one of the assumptions of the normal errors regression model is that the actual distribution of error is normal. And the way that the inferences are made based on the fitting of the model, uh, this assumption needs to be upheld. So the easiest way to look at this is to go to Analyze, Distribution, and what we're going to do is plot just the single variable plot of the residuals uh, from our prediction of satisfaction. So if I hit OK, we can see that we have a plot of the residuals from our model um, from every individual. Now the mean of this is going to be zero, and this is enforced by the model. This is something that is just true, and it is within rounding error here. But the important thing to look for is whether the distribution of these residuals looks about normal. Uh, now looking at these just with the plot uh, may not be the most informative way, especially if you're just starting to get used to seeing uh, these histograms of essentially normal distributions. So one way that this is made easier is by printing out the QQ plot, uh, the quantile by quantile plot. Uh, to get that, go to the drop down under residual satisfaction and you'll find the normal quantile plot. And what this plot is going to do is plot uh, the actual value of the residual as well as its expected value under normality. That is, if these residuals were actually drawn from a normal distribution. And by doing this, uh, you'll get a plot of these points. And if they fall along this diagonal line perfectly, it means that all the points are exactly where they would be if they were from a normal distribution. What's nice about this type of plot is that any deviation from this uh, diagonal line is showing you places where the points are either closer to the center or further away from the center uh, than they would be if they were actually drawn from a normal distribution. Now if you would like any formal diagnostics uh, regarding this normality assumption, uh, you can request these by fitting a continuous distribution to these data. To do that, go to the residual satisfaction again, go down to continuous fit, and select normal. And you'll see what this does on the right hand side here. It fits a normal distribution to your histogram and to your data. Now this is only estimating right now the location and dispersion, the mean and the standard deviation, uh, but to get a test of the goodness of fit, we can go to the drop down under fit and normal and request the goodness of fit. And what JMP will do for us is print out the Shapiro Wilk W test. And what this uh, test is of uh, is the null hypothesis that the data is from a normal distribution against an alternative that the data are not drawn from a normal distribution. So if you reject this null, that's actually uh, not what we would like. We would like this result to be non statistically significant. And this is what we find here our p value, or our probability uh, less than w, w is just the test statistic in this case. The probability value is uh, no less than our standard alpha of 0.05. Uh, 
Uh, what this is telling us is that we don't have evidence that these data are drawn from anything different than a normal distribution. Uh, so as far as our tests go for now, uh, we haven't violated our assumption of normality, or at the very least we don't have evidence that uh, the normality assumption is violated in the population. Now, uh, as a general rule for these cases, um, this goodness of fit test becomes extremely sensitive as sample sizes get large. Uh, so with sample sizes in the hundreds, you'll typically be able to reject this null even with minor deviations from what would be expected under normality. Uh, so this goodness of fit test should be taken with a grain of salt if you have a huge number of subjects. And again, this goes for all tests. All statistical tests become extremely sensitive uh, as they grow uh, with larger sample sizes. So the rejection of this null hypothesis with extremely large sample sizes uh, may not be cause for concern. Um, as far as the judgment goes for uh, telling whether our assumptions have been violated with respect to normality, uh, typically violations will be fairly obvious if they are there. In this case, the distribution of the residuals looks essentially normal. Uh, there are cases where um, our values are closer to or further from the center of the distribution than we would expect under normality. Uh, but given sort of the entire context, uh, we don't seem to have much evidence here of any problems with fitting a normal errors regression model, uh, at least vis-a-vis -vis the assumptions of normal errors.